Hey yo, Stoic here. Welcome to the Bedrock Guide. Today we're going to be making a drown farm. And yes, the conveyor is back. Let's talk about rates really quick. Just so everyone knows it, you can pull in, you can get from 0 to 30 levels in just under 16 minutes. And then you can get up to 50 levels in one hour. Now, we are spawning in as many drowns as we can. You can get up to five in one area, especially in the ocean and you can get less in a river so you want to stay away from rivers but you can see that the idea is that they're spawning on the outside here they're being funneled down and because we've got water sources in here it is kind of a okay okay blacking farm <laughs> but you can see this anything that comes down the way will make its way down into our kill chamber instantly and then we're able to get more and more bad guys to drop in as well so let's talk rates and this might not have the right stuff in here but that's okay we i averaged i tested this many 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 hours and i was able to get an average of 1848 flesh rotten flesh and i averaged about 42 tridents per hour i was also able to get 276 black ink sacks which is pretty sweet and then i was able to get 154 copper ingots as well we're pulling in the copper ingots and sometimes it looks like we got a wandering trader that uh, made a misstep in there <laughs> i was also able to pull in nautilus shells as well i got about 73 of those on average and then i was also to get <laughs> i do get a couple fishing poles in here and there overall close to 2400 items in one hour for this drown farm so i'm pretty happy with it and yeah, let's talk about some details. So the mechanics of this farm are pretty simple. We're gonna be about 27 blocks away, just need to be 25. And we're gonna be spawning in drowns. Now we're in the middle of the ocean, which is very important. And sometimes a lot of people build their big mob farms up in the air over the ocean. And you're thinking, where are the other mobs? Well, we've got water streams in here and that is what's happening. We've got water source blocks. so. Mother mobs cannot spawn in water source blocks, and that's what will keep them from spawning in. And we can concentrate just on the drowns. So we just have a layered system here that will drop into a row of conveyors, and then they make their way to our trident killer. It is just very simple and straightforward to make. In this particular model, we've got a way just to keep the minecarts going all the time. Uh, if you've got a lot happening in your area, maybe you want to turn them off, and we'll talk about that over there. But for this example, you can keep it simple and just put in redstone blocks, and that will put in all of the shaking carts for your activator rails all the time. And then we could just got a simple trident killer down here. In this model, also, you can drop in, we can put a catalyst in here, skull catalyst down here to get rid of the XP so you don't have to worry about that lag buildup as well. Or we can add in an XP water stream, which is pretty simple. But yeah, this, this is very, very easy to make and very straightforward, just straight lines everywhere. <laughs> so let's get into that. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is just find an ocean. And that's very important because we cannot use rivers. Although no monsters can spawn in a river other than drowns, the spawn cap for drowns in a river is only two. So you're only going to be able to get two drowns at a time. But whereas in the ocean, if we go a little bit lower here, closer to the ground, we're going to start seeing all of these drowns pop in. So there's one, two, and three, four, five. So we've got five in here already. And if they walk away, we'll have another one kind of spawn in. So we can have a spawn cap of five drowns into the ocean, and that's what we're going to take advantage of for this farm. Once we've done that, we want to go up to Y110 just to be clear of anything that's below us. And we're trying to get 44 blocks away from the floor of the ocean. And sometimes the floor of the ocean can be kind of high. You can kind of see some of the ocean is really high over there, and sometimes it's really low. And having it at 110 will guarantee that you won't have any drowns spawning down there and they'll always spawn in your farm the next thing we want to do is go ahead and take a look at the sun make sure it is moving and it is going down this way to the west so that way that means this way is north and this is very important to us because we're going to be using the mine carts and they're always going to throw north in the configuration that we've got 
The other thing you can do too is just to go into the negative z direction and you can see that my z is getting lower and lower, more and more negative. That means that is the negative z direction and that also means that that is north. Before we go any further, I'm gonna have a list of the materials in the description. So go ahead and take a look at that to get all the things ready and we can kind of a la carte this thing to fit your needs however you want if you want to go bare minimum or if you want to add in the other things to make this thing more server and realm friendly then we can definitely put those in as well but yeah once we know north is that direction we want to turn to the east because that sun is setting back that way east is this way and we're going to go 33 blocks out this way so that's going to count as one and then i'll let you count Once you've gone 33 blocks, go ahead and put a temporary block in right there, and then we can put in our first target block. For this, we're gonna have a way to switch things off. If you don't wanna switch things off with redstone, here's where, this is the spot where you would grab your redstone block and just use that to power up your rails permanently all the time. So, but for this scenario, we are going to put in our first block right here, and then we're gonna jump up here and go to the south. That's north, sun is rising in the east, so south. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We went 13 blocks this way. And then once we come back over here, we've done 13 already. We're gonna get a total of 30 all the way in that direction. So I'm gonna put another 17 in over here. Since we've got all of those in, now we can put some can put some glass along this side right here and then we'll put some glass in on this side as well those target blocks or redstone blocks whatever whichever one you're using and this line of glass in come over to the east side of our of our target blocks and now we're going to line this side up with a solid block i'm using concrete just to have something stand out for you all but you can also just use plain stone or cobblestone in these positions. This is gonna get a, help us align our mine carts a little bit later. So in fact, we're just gonna go ahead and put them in because it'll be easier. So we're gonna throw these activator rails in here. Remember, these are activator rails and not powered rails. And once you put the second row in, they will start reconnecting. You just gotta make sure you do it right can put them in and they will reposition themselves in the orientation that we want you can use regular rails as well but they will kind of connect in, in a weird fashion so if you can double up on your activator rails just get a stack of them i think that'll be helpful but go ahead and remove this set of activator rails on this side maintaining the ones on top of the target blocks from here we're going to put another row of blocks in and we can make these solid you can make them tinted glass I'm trying to maintain some darkness out here but the next thing you want to do put a temporary block in right there so we can enclose this cart when we're ready to put it in so it doesn't roll off these rails they won't roll in the north south direction now but they will try to roll in the east west so we have to make sure we've got something in the way to keep them from rolling away from here we can just fill this in on this side as well to just enclose it entirely after that, we're ready to put in some glass, or some not glass, but we want regular ice, not packed ice, not blue ice. Regular ice will do just fine. And we're going to put this in all the way across on top of our solid blocks like that. Then we're going to start bridging up, and we're going to do this on each side, and we're going to go, we're going to step up seven times. So that's one, so that's one layer, two layer, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can get rid of those temporary ones down here if you want to, just like that. And then do the same thing on the other side. Okay, you can see we've got, we're starting here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, on that side, go ahead and take the rest of your ice and just fill this in all the way across for each one of those rows. So we'll have a nice funnel system into our rail system. All right, so we've got the funnel here and I forgot to mention, and hopefully you're watching the whole video before you decide to build this, is that you can enclose your system by placing solid blocks on the outside here and then filling in rows like this. It will be cheaper to do that 
as far as the number of blocks needed to totally encase it. In that case, I used tinted glass to encase all of my ice and then put a roof over top of it. So it's totally enclosed, but you can use solid blocks. I just used tinted so you could see in. But there will be less blocks in that scenario than there will be for this because you have to put in some solid blocks around the perimeter and then you have to slab it. You don't want to introduce any light up top and then you have to introduce a whole bunch of leaves over top of this as well. So it is cheaper to encase the entire thing. In this case, I'm going to build the, the entire umbrella over there on this farm, but you can definitely encase it and it will make it a lot darker. The other thing that you can do, and uh, Golden Helmet 403, kind of a, the big, big guy on this drowned farms, is that you can use TNT. TNT acts the same way as ice. Ice allows mobs to spawn anywhere on the block, not just in the northwest corner. So that'd be the northwest corner. Now TNT also has that same properties and it is actually a solid block as well. So it will block all the light. So if you have lots and lots of TNT you want to spend, you can put it on here. If you don't feel like, if you trust all your, your friends and the people you're playing with on your server, then maybe TNT can be an option. But if you don't trust anyone, maybe TNT is not the way to go. But for this one, we're going to use ice and then I'll put the umbrella over top of it just so you can see how it works. But if you're just going to enclose it, then just put stuff all the way around it, just like that, and extend it all the way around. And then when we get to the top, you'll just fill that in with tinted glass on top. So getting back to the rest of this, we're gonna need to grab our fence gates now and go ahead and put them in. You could probably put in some temporary blocks just to make this easy. Pick a side and make sure that your fence gates, when you put them in, they're facing this direction. So just drop them in all the way down. Once you've got those fence gates in, get rid of your temporary blocks. And now we're gonna put some stuff on the outside to contain all the water. So on the south side of this farm, we're going to put in, I'm gonna put in tinted, tinted glass on this side over here. And you don't have to use tinted glass for this. I just wanna be able to show you what's happening while we're working. And you can put this in all the way across. So we've encased it on the side and we're going to do the same thing on this side over here just to help contain all of the water now since we've got those gates in the way we can get rid of this block and in fact we got to get rid of this top one right here so even with that gate we're going to have to have this opening because if it's not too t if it's not tall enough then the mobs will get stuck and they won't be able to get tossed into our trident killer that we'll put in here in a little bit Along the outside, go ahead and throw in your tinted glass or solid blocks, whatever you want to put, and then we'll have this side wrapped up. All right, we got to the outside. Outsides are done. Bridge up just a little bit, and we're going to go all the way around. It's like this, and then we're, then we're going to go up a second level on this side as well. So all the way around, we'll have one, two blocks to help make a perimeter to keep our mobs inside. All right, so the next part is to get our water sources in here. And the trick is to just pull in two buckets of water. And we're gonna put our first one here. And we're gonna skip a block and put one in there. We've now created an infinite water source. So now we can just come over, grab, grab. And then we'll just keep going over little by little to fill this in. And we're gonna fill this whole row up grab and then place. You can see that we're filling this in. We've got plenty of water here and I've got creative mode. So I'm just going to fill this in. You're going to take a little bit of time to do this. We're going to do this first row. And then once you're done, you can put in your second row. You can see that things are going to start to flow a little bit over top or close to our gates. And so if we do it over here as well, that's all filled in and I'm going to pull it in over here. You can see that our water is separated now and everything will flow right down into our kill chamber once they hit our carts. So at this point, keep filling this in all the way across. And once you get to the top, put instead of putting it here at the bottom, we're going to want to put it all the way up at the top of the second block. So not where, not right there. We're going to put it right where that ice block is. 
so that and all the way across on that side and then all the way across on that side. So I will let you do that and you'll see all the water dripping down into our farm. Okay, so while you're working and it's daytime, you're gonna start to see some of our squids making their way into the rail system. So <laughs> you might have a couple of them that get a little stuck just because we haven't gotten everything in place. But the next step is to come over here. And you're probably gonna wanna go down and then pillar back up into this position, or you can branch off from our position over here because we are gonna be doing some redstone in the future. So what we can do is just put another layer of glass right there, and we are gonna have to drop down at some point to maybe drop some water down. You figure that part out. I know I'm in creative. A lot of people make these comments that, oh, why are you doing in creative? Well, it's to show you quickly what you can do, but you can always put in scaffolding, block up. You can put in water columns, whatever you'd like to do. And But anyways, now we're going to put in two blocks right over the edge, just past our target block. In fact, we're only going to put one in, just on this side where we have our future redstone, so the glass side. At this point, we're going to be down one, two, three, and then this is our fourth one. We're going to put a platform, a four by four platform, and we're going to make it even with our, let's see, our target block right there. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That would be five, <laughs> and then we'll come back around. Break that out, put in some new, that is our kill chamber, that's our kill chamber floor. All of our goodies are going to come dropping down in here. So now we're just going to build a basic trident killer. All right, we have two options here. If uh, I'm going to show you how to collect the XP, if you don't want to collect it, well, we can put in a skull catalyst at this point. So what we can do is we're going, since our XP needs to go in that direction, we're going to skip that piston position. That way things kind of flow towards us. And so we're going to put our first piston there, second one, third one, and then fourth one. And at this point, if you don't want to collect the XP, you want to burn it, put a catalyst in nearby and it will help burn up everything. You'll see all of the skulk veins flying everywhere, growing everywhere after a little while. So they won't affect the performance of the farm. But for this, I'm not going to put that in. I'll put, put in a solid block and then we're going to put in a... Actually, we're going to put in a redstone repeater right here. And I learned this from some other tutorials I was looking at. And this will help prevent any of the mobs from kind of trying to walk through. You can see I kind of stepped up to get on top of that. And that's going to prevent any baby zombies from walking out. But it will not restrict the flow of our farm and our XP to get to our position. So with that in place, we can grab our solid blocks and put them in all the way around here. And you can see that we've got kind of two layers now. We can then grab our droppers and we can put them in all four corners. It does not matter which direction they're facing. And then we can grab our observers at this point and we'll just go around in a circle. So we never want to put them directly over top of a piston. You want to look at your dropper and make sure the red dot is over top of the piston. And just kind of go around in a circle here and should be in good shape there. Now we can grab solid blocks again, put those on top of our pistons, make sure you are out of there. Before we go too far into this, make sure we got a stair right there and you can see it. Should have put that in while we we're going around in a circle, but that's gonna help us with our water stream. So we're gonna kind of push things out this window and then down into a collection system for our experience. And from here, we can just kind of build up our trident killer, because everything's going to get caught inside of it. Go all the way around. And we need enough height for our mon mobs to get through there. And while we're sitting right here, we're going to grab our minecart. Just a regular minecart. We're going to go to the end here. We're going to collect some goodies, because they're just out of range. Place one of our minecarts on each one of these rails and make sure you've got the right orientation of rails. If you don't, these things are going to be flying back towards you. This is looking good already. The minecarts in place. Now we have to 
get our button in right here, right even with our minecarts. In fact, this button tells the minecart that there's something solid to throw our mob onto. And, but there's really nothing there. So the button is really nice to have <laughs> for this build. And it really makes this, this whole trident killer and conveyor thing work. So make sure your button's here. If when you turn things on and your mobs are sitting, they're going boom, 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 sitting right there. That means your button is not there or you've got them blocked off and they can't get through. So you need a height of one, two, three for them to go through and a button right there. So what we can do now is I'll just put in tinted glass all the way around at this point, just so we can see in a little bit and make sure we've got capped off and that should prevent any light from making its way in to that area of the farm. All right, make your way back to the AFK position. We're gonna throw in a lever right there, and then we're gonna go out 15 dust, and you can see once you get past a certain spot, we're gonna to need to throw in a repeater, so once you've gone 15, that'll turn back on. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then we'll go 15 right here. And from there, we can just kind of split off. And you can see that all of the rails on this side are now moving. So anything that drops into them, then get moved over this direction. So we don't have those energized, so they're not gonna work. Now we can go this way until we kind of run out of juice on our redstone, which is pretty darn close. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to, from this position, grab that. We know that that's going to stay energized, but we're going to need to break that off so we don't create an infinite loop of redstone. And we got to make our way down to this position over here. So we're going to grab a solid block and put it on one side of that piston. And we're going to put a re redstone repeater right there. From here, we want to come out with, we can use glass just to be safe, to make sure we don't spawn anything we don't want to. And then we're going to put in a, another glass block. After that, put another one right there. So one, two, three, put a solid block in that position. You can then grab your redstone torch, put it right there, and we can see that we have turned off our trident killer. Now, if we get rid of this power, hear all the clicking. So our trident killer is working down there. And so what we're doing is we're putting like a negative circuit in. So what we can do is come over this way. And what happens is when we draw this power over here, it will activate all of our rails. So we can put some more in right there. And we'll have to extend that one in right there as well. And now all of our minecarts are moving. And when we drop down on top of this block, we actually turn off this redstone torch. So we're going to make our way down to this side of the trident killer. We've got our opening here. And of course, I'm in creative. Make sure you've got a little scaffolding, a little bridge over here. Once you've got it in place, one, two, three, we're just going to make our way all the way over here until we get right to the north side of that row of redstone, because we are going to bring our XP down this direction. Again, if you don't want the XP and you're fine with maybe a little bit of lag or the XP buildup, which does cause lag over time, you can just put in the catalyst, but we're going to make our way out to our AFK position all the way down here. And we're going to eventually put in a soul sand down here, which we can do right now. We'll just put it in right there. We don't really need any kelp. I mean, it's only four blocks that we're going to be going up. Branch this out so it just kind of comes up. And then we can put this rail in that can enclose some of the water that we're going to be putting in on both sides. And so then we got a nice little trail. I'm going to go ahead and make it daytime so we can see a little bit better for the next step. Because it was nighttime, let's go ahead and put some soul torches on here. You can just kind of space them out. I like to use soul torches because they give enough light and you can just put a whole bunch down. But they're not going to impact anything that we've got going on up there because they just can't reach that high. But they will prevent any drowns from spawning in this water stream that we're going to have throughout here. So come back to the start. And this, is, this part's pretty simple. The stuff, all of our goodies will come out, put a little barrier in here so they don't try to jump out. But all of our XP will flow down and we're gonna go back one, put in a button, and then we're gonna put in a new water stream right after it. And we're just gonna continue this down the line. 
and go back one. Make sure it goes around the corner. You got the idea here. We don't want to use a button right here. We kind of want this is another a another way to keep mobs from getting to you if you don't have enough light down here or maybe a broke a light by mistake. It's kind of an insurance policy so that if do, drowns do make their way down this way and they are little, they will not be able to get to you because they can't get through this little opening, but the XP will be able to flow through. So you can come up here now, grab your water bucket and one, two, three, four. I've already got plenty of water everywhere. This will allow all the XP to come to your position. At this point, one, two, three, Let's put in an AFK position, little slabs on top here to prevent, protect us from our phantom buddies that like to show up. All right, our AFK position is looking pretty good, but we got to collect this loot. And I don't want to collect it over here. I want to collect it down here. So you're going to have to branch down underneath here once more. And we're going to go one, one, two, three, four, and then we'll have a platform down here. Put it in a four by four platform and you'll probably want to extend, expand this a little later. I'm going to give you enough storage for one hour's worth of loot. So in fact, we'll do one more row right there and you can see you're already expanding it because you're going to get so many goodies. All right. We know that our kill chamber is this, these four blocks right there. So what we can do is we're going to offset our chest just a little bit so we can do some collection system. I'm going to put in two chests and then we're going to put in chests that go in that direction. Go ahead and grab something temporarily, hopper, hopper in that direction so that it flows that way. And if I were to expand this farm, I'd be putting in more and more chests in this direction and then making sure it's nice and safe for everything. But for right now, I want to just have that. Now, what we can do here is go ahead and put in, I like to put in a set of rails all the way around one, two, three, nice curve. And then we can put in a minecart right there. This centers up our minecart, so it's going to collect everything. So uh, you could probably save a minecart or a hopper right here and have a fence to keep things from moving back and forth. And I'll show you how to do that right now. And what you do is you just put in your two fences or two rails, and then you can put in a fence over top of that. Grab your minecart with hopper and just kind of push it in there. And then you can probably, you can just get rid of that. Now you're over top of kind of both of these little areas and you're actually going to capture anything. As long as this thing is running, you will be able to rotate the items over top of this and it will grab it and throw it down into our storage system. So everything's looking pretty good so far. And if you wanted to, you could probably just make a little stairwell out and over to the redstone platform over here. Make sure you use glass if you're going to do it. And then you can get back and forth pretty easy. At some point, you're going to have Elytra, and this will be pretty obsolete. But yeah, you can just make your way over there to our AFK position. All right, grab your solid block. I'm going to use magenta concrete here. You can use stone, cobblestone, whatever you want to use. Make sure it's a solid block. So we're going to, we went up one, two, three, four, and this is our fourth one. One, that'll be, we're going to go five total. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to do that in all four corners, making sure that all of that is going away from the center of our builds. Okay, we've got them in all four corners now. Go ahead and fill in each one of these little squares, and then you're going to connect each one. Make sure you're not putting a solid block over top of any of the water. If you do that, you will ruin the rates of your farm because there's no longer a a valid spawn point for your drowns. And your drowns are surface spawn only. So they need to have a transparent block above them in order to spawn. And transparent can be glass, it can be leaves. You cannot use half slabs or upside down slabs, anything like that. Okay, you got your platform in, and of course now we have to slab it all. Only slab the parts that we just put in. So I'll let you do that. Don't fill in the center just yet, and we will be there really soon because once we put the center in, we're going to have some goodies coming down the pipeline. All right, I know I said I was going to use tinted glass, but in the description, I do have leaves. So we're going to put in our leaves, and this is where you put it, right here, and we're just going to go all the way back and forth, and this is going to start to cause lower light levels down below. All right, we got it filled in. Now we can come down here. Like I said earlier, this is the more expensive way to put in um, 
to get rid of the light levels, you can definitely encase this thing, no problem. If you were to do that, all you would have to do is fill it in on top with some tinted glass. That's the best, best way to do it, or some leaves over the top to keep all of the light from coming in. But yep, that's what you would do in that case. And make sure that, like I said earlier, make sure you have solid blocks along the outside. All right, let's take a quick look. So we've got we got some drowns in there. I turned it on real quick, and now we got some new ones sitting in here. This one's got a trident, so hopefully we get some goodies off of that one. And then you can see we don't have a trident inside. So we got to remedy that. Make sure you've got a trident that has some sort of impaling on it. That way we take advantage of the water stream that's in there. You can really kill these a lot faster, which means you increase your rates. You don't need one right away. But if you can get one over time, that is the best thing you can do for this farm. And now that things are in there, we can kind of see what a couple of them, they're just chilling. <laughs> Turn it on. There they go. They're getting killed. And our XP should be rolling over here. Let's see if we can go into survival. It was level two before. It's got new drowns in there already. They just keep moving in. I just think this is hilarious. No, we're not hacking. We're just using the game mechanics. Eventually this... XP is going to make its way over to us. Sometimes it builds up just a little bit, but yeah. Yep, got a little bit just there. Yep, it's pulling in. And we're all set. All right, thanks everyone for joining me on The Bedrock Guide. And this tutorial was fun. Thank you for Golden Helmet for some of his help on this and inspiration. And we got the conveyor back in the game again. I love it. <laughs> it's so fun to watch. And it's just unique. If you want to do something different, this is what you want to do because you do get wonderful rates as well. And another shout out, I believe it was Silent Whisper. Maybe he had the V funnel uh, a while ago. Maybe it was kind of inverted. Who knows? I can't remember. But yeah, a little shout out to him as well because he makes some wonderful forms as well. But anyways, thanks everyone for joining me and talk to you later. Bye-bye.